and we are live. It's such a pleasure to be here with Paul Speckman and Edu Lane. You are truly the legends of the old school death metal, and it's a big honor for me to have you here. So thank you for being here, first of all. Thanks a lot for having us, man. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here as well. Okay. Uh, I, I know you from many Great years. Like, I know Paul. Paul has a little bit of a late connection, but we will make it. So the first thing I wanted to ask you is like, uh, Paul, can you tell us like a, a little bit of, since basically you, many people say you started the old death metal thing. And I wanted to ask you, what's your opinion about it? Uh, because many, many, many people said you started it all. So I wanted to ask you what's, uh, if you think it's true or not, because I, I mean, you've been in the scene for almost forever. So can you tell us a bit about how you started and, and if you feel that you started death metal or, or some part of it? I think you did. Uh, I would just, okay, now I can hear you. I couldn't hear, like when I have the stream on, I can't hear you. I went over okay. to Facebook now and now I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, I, so what I, I wanted just... to say was just that. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no. I just wanted okay. to say that uh, my my question. Yeah, I would just do a, ask a question and let you answer. It's like, can you tell us a bit of how you started master? And later on, if you think that what many people say is like you started death metal, what's your opinion about what many people are saying? Uh, I would never say that. <laughs> Come on, you know. Uh, there were a lot of bands out there at this time, just all starting around the same time. You know, uh, it's like we uh, recorded that demo in uh, 85, 86, the original demo. And and uh, during the tape trading times, sometimes you would get these compilation tapes and it would have like one song from uh, from the original master demo. It would have, it had like uh, a song from Possessed. The Exorcist was on there and, and this, I remember this cassette also had a uh, truck and death and one of his uh, rehearsals. So there were a lot of people at that time, to be honest with you. I mean, that's my opinion. There were a lot of people at that time that were part of the scene. The, I mean, it was a new scene. It was just starting out, of course, but I'm just saying that there were a lot of people that were part of it. No one person can really take credit for it. I don't think, you know? Okay. What other bands you think uh, were around at the same time? Do you think they deserve cre uh, credit? Uh, obviously, Massacre was around somewhere shortly after that time, I suppose. I don't, you know, it's like, uh, to be honest with you, I wasn't following a lot of the bands. Edu probably has, has a better better knowledge of what was going on. I'm not sure because I was listening to bands like uh, Venom and Motorhead and Slayer at that time, to be quite honest with you. Okay, yeah, so I, I, will think... I will ask this to Edu. So, uh, I mean, Edu, first of all, uh, if somebody like Paul says to ask you about death metal old school, it means that you know a lot. So this this proves no, no, like I'm I'm just I'm just a fan, and uh, uh, you know I'm I'm always, I'm 47, almost 48, and uh, I've been I've been into the metal music since the mid 80s. Let's say you know I started in a in the death metal more like 10 years later, like mid nineties or so, you know, because I was a really yeah. big fan of trash metal in the beginning, like heavy metal and trash metal. But then uh, around, I don't know, around 91 or 92, uh, trash metal brought me down, you know, and uh, I was searching for something more, uh, more real, more true. And that's when I started uh, digging into the death metal mm -hmm. scene and, and the black metal scene. And of course, master and like he's Paul said, possessed. I even think uh, a few bands that were considered trash metal kind of uh, brought the the death metal. Like I don't know, like uh, Death Angel, uh, uh, Dark Angel. I'm sorry, you know, and uh, stuff like that, man. Uh, there's there's a few bands, uh, especially in the U.S. I think uh, with Autopsy or or Immolation, Incantation. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. suffocation, these, all, all those bands. These bands were a little bit later, though. I, these bands were a little bit later than what we're talking now, though. But yeah, I agree with eight, you. Eight, <laughs> late, late 80s or early 90s, probably. You guys were like uh, 
the pioneers, I think, you know, like you possessed uh, are the bands that for myself are the pioneers for, for the this music style, you know. Uh, maybe terrorizer, but, but they but, were a bit grind. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that was later. But but the reality is, is that uh, there really wasn't a death metal label at that time. We were all just playing metal, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's you know, true. I mean, the label that, like the... The labels all came later, thrash metal, death metal, black death metal. At that time, we were just playing metal. It, it was something new, in, in my opinion, anyway, you know. Yeah, I agree. You guys were, were pushing the, the boundaries, you know, like like thrash metal did with heavy metal a few years earlier. And, uh, right. not, and exactly. then you guys yeah, came, yeah. you know, that, that wasn't like, a, I don't know, a name, like you said, you know, a music genre uh, established back then it was just all metal, which make it more sense and makes more sense to me still nowadays you know i prefer to call it metal in general you know with all those sub labels exactly. and and divisions it's, it's right. just too hard <laughs> okay so yeah i, mean, I agree for many, for many uh like many bands we are talking about like terrorize and all this stuff from the 90s came like four or five years after master am i right uh what was the year that master released the first record like 80 four or something paul when was the time well, you it, released, we only released it was only some demos at that time 85 more like 85 86 you know 85 yeah, so was, yeah the actual uh okay. we didn't release the record until 89 you know okay 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 so yeah basically you released the first record in 89 when death metal was starting to happen but you had like demos like before many of the bands we know okay so i wanted to ask you since i mean starting up a, a death metal band in 85 and keeping it alive till two, 2020 man that's a long story that's a long i mean master has like a long a very long long history as a band uh you started in the us then you relocated in europe and my question was like you you quitted master for a period and then you started over in europe right how was that that uh, translation from US to was, to Europe? I was playing, yeah, I was playing with this band uh, Kravator for a few years. Yeah, I uh, we, we did this tour in uh, 1999. It was uh, Malevolent Creation, Master, and Kravator was a support band, and uh, I started jamming like sound checks with the guys from Kravator and having a good time with the drummer and with with the guitar player Christopher. And uh, their bass player, Bruno, left the band, Rabathor, and, and started his own band, Hypnos. And uh, they called me, and uh, Christopher called me and asked me if I would consider moving to Europe just for the summer to, to check out his band, Kravathor. He sent me some tapes and stuff, exit cassettes, you know. <laughs> but anyway, it's a long time ago, before the CD revolution, really, in, in a sense. But So I, I learned the cassette, uh, the songs on the cassettes, and I came out. And the first tour with Kravathor was in Japan. And I'll be honest with you, we, we practiced maybe two or three times. I played like shit on the Japanese tour. I could hardly play the songs. <laughs> but anyway, in the end, you know, it all worked out. And I ended up staying here. And, and life changed. And, and uh, in 2002, the guys uh, helped me record a master album. And by 2004, Kravathor had split up for good. And I just stayed here and continued. Yeah. That's pretty much a short story. Yeah. <laughs> okay, short okay, version. okay. So short version, but like as I said, you, you changed us a lot of members. So at the end, the people who were playing with you had nothing to do with the original guy. So basically, you always stayed like you are the only guy who were in master since the beginning, right? Well, either will tell you that. With, I uh, mean, he's the master, people right? Have personality. <laughs> either either would agree with that. People have different personalities, and it's not always easy to get along with them forever. And this is why there were some changes, why there are still sometimes some changes. You know, maybe somebody would say that I'm hard-headed, but I really don't think it's true. I just expect the best from my band, and sometimes... No, it no, yeah, yeah. You are... Always as a, I played with you, and I played with many, many people, and I can say you just care about your band. You're not too hard. You're just... Actually, you are one of the... The sweetest people in the metal business, I would say. One of the coolest people to play with. So <laughs> that's true, whoever, right? yeah, whoever said that didn't play with other with other people. 
Okay, Edu, so a little bit about you. Uh, you're like, as we said, you are the mastermind of uh, Beyond Nervo Chaos, who is a Brazilian death metal band uh, who has been around since 1996. And you're yes. also the founder of uh, Tumba Records, who is yes. also a, a Brazilian uh, label. And also you started doing festivals in Brazil, death metal festivals. Yeah, I, so, I mean, I start. I started Tumba in in '96 uh, as a as a mail order and a store and a label and a booking agency. So I I, I was doing pretty much everything, you know, and uh, because nobody was doing this in Brazil, we we had some shows. We had some like the big names like Black Sabbath, Maiden, Judas Priest, but all the underground was was almost non-existent over here, you know. So I decided uh to do something for for the country i live in you know for our scene because i i'm a metal fan i'm a metal head so i wanted to see the bands over here you know and uh back then i was working with the christian guys so uh they helped me a lot uh you know showing me uh good bands good connections how things worked outside brazil so i i toured with them and i learned a lot uh with with them and i'm very thankful to them because of that too and uh so 96 i decided to do something about it and i started tumba uh a couple of years passed and uh, i closed the store because it wasn't my thing just being behind the counter the whole fucking day selling cds you know and uh i put i put the label on the freezer mm -hmm. because i didn't have time and i really focused on 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 the booking thing with uh, shows tours and i started a festival around uh, early 2001 or two I started two festivals, and one of them is Setembro Negro, which is Black September, and uh, the, the the other one was called Extreme Metal. I, I kind of ended that after a couple of editions, but I kept with uh, Black September, and uh, I'm still doing this festival. I, I had a break, a five year break, you know, on on the Tumba business because I was really fed up with the whole the whole thing. Uh, all my my goals were were achieved, so I, I had to had a break. And now I, I came back three years ago. I decided to come back with uh, Tumba again. And I'm, I'm basically doing uh, bands I like and extreme bands since 96, you know, mainly death, uh, black, uh, trash metal, uh, some grindcore. And, and I remember a funny story. I was uh, talking to Paul a few years ago and he was like, dude, it's about time for you to book master in brazil you know all those bands you're booking are great but uh you know we're the pioneers and i said dude you're totally right you know <laughs> you're totally right so at first we at first we tried to do a tour together with abzu and massacre but uh it didn't work out the tour got canceled but finally we we managed to to get all those bands and especially master and then we we kind of bounded me and paul He's such a cool guy and, uh, you know, easy going down to earth, the kind of people I, I, I get along with. I like it, you know, so uh, it, it went beyond the business and, and we became friends. And then, uh, you know, he gave us an opportunity in Europe a few years ago to tour with Master. It was an excellent tour. And then we did a, a tour in Brazil uh, one or two years ago. A uh, big one was very good in the bus. Uh, good time with, with, yeah. And and we even try to do a side project, me, uh, Paul, and John uh, McIntyre from Incantation, but uh, it never really happened. I mean, we recorded a few tracks and 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 it got lost somewhere. Maybe we get back. You know, yeah. Maybe yeah. we get back. We'll now, see. I mean, we'll see. Now it's the time to record stuff, guys. Everybody's stuck home. Now it's the True. time to. True. To record it's just your that, stuff. that John is super busy with a lot of uh, with incantation, of course, and I all the imagine. other projects he has. You know, so yeah. it's it's been hard, but it's it's something. It's a project we wanted to do for fun. It's not for for yeah. for nothing else. You know, so whenever it happens, it happens. It has to be that way. You know, it is it's a spontaneous thing. It's yeah. not something we rehearse or we we do something. So to make a long story short, this is about uh, this is about. Me, you know, since since '96, I started uh, yeah. Tumba wow. and uh, and Nervo Kills as well. Uh, before Nervo Kills, I was playing in in some other bands, more trash metal bands, like I said. And uh, and with Nervo Kills, I started really diving into the the death metal scene and the black metal scene, and and you know, meeting the the guys, meeting the bands, and uh, you know, I I 
I got bit and uh, I have this passion for for it since then, you know, and and I think it's great. It's amazing. Uh, guys like Paul are are an inspiration to me, you know, to be doing this for such a long time. It's it's not easy, as we all know, uh, all the lineup changes, all the bullshit we have to go through. Uh, the only thing that really can make this happen is the passion and the love we have for the music we do you know we don't i i don't really think about this or that we just do it you know it is it, it's, it's just the fire burning inside yeah. that keeps burning high you know i really i really like it. some people get bored and and this is the way it is paul is I mean, an inspiration man for sure absolutely i mean the way paul keeps doing it the way the way paul keeps managing the band and going forward it's an inspiration and I think many young people and many young bands uh, should really pay attention to like what Paul is doing, what you are doing, because to, these days you see many bands they just last too little because they because it's like they they expect it to be to be easier, but it's not, you know. And especially, I, I think you know. To, <laughs> We think I, I think I think it lacks passion, man. In the end, it's all about the fucking love and passion uh, for what you do. It doesn't matter if you do death metal, black metal, or folk music. Yeah. If you have the passion for it, you're really gonna go for it. It doesn't matter how hard and and you know it, it's not about money or fame or or getting chicks or anything. It's about the fucking love and music, the passion yeah. you have for the extreme music, man. That's you know. why we started. And that's why we keep doing this shit, you know? It's not to, to be fucking millionaires, man. You know? I, really love, I mean, you know, I really love to hear people like you uh, talking because you always remind me why I started, you know, the old metal stuff. I remember when I was like 18 and I was going to Brazil to visit my grandparents, they told mm -hmm. me, you should visit Galeria do Rock, like the rock yeah. gallery. And I went to, and it was like insane. Too bad it doesn't exist anymore because I, I went there and it's all tattoo shops. So uh, uh, back then it was like only record stores and t-shirts. It was like fucking unbelievable. Yeah, I, and, I think I think Paul can help me out, but things nowadays are very different, and and it's very hard for us that live the those let's say the the 80s or the 90s the scene and everything else was very different very very different we cannot compare to to what it is nowadays i'm not saying it is bad nowadays it's just different and and if you don't adapt you you're gonna get lost in in the way that's that's what i believe you know and i think i think people are are more worried about uh, having many likes on their profile or or being millionaires or being very famous and and this is not what the style is about you know i think i think the extreme metal it's not about uh you know it's not about the money or the fame it's about the passion for the music you know uh, that's how trash metal started you know i think and, and that's how death metal started because everybody was fed up with the previous scene let's say you know we started in heavy metal and and it came to a point that heavy metal was kind of getting bored or we needed more uh, and then trash metal came and we're like, yeah, this is it. And then, you know, some bands like Paul, for example, is pushing even harder. Let's do more aggressive, more extreme than Slayer or Venom or, or Motorhead. So they're always pushing the Bondires, you know, and and I see a lot of copycats nowadays. So why 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 listen to a clone when Master's still playing, for example, you know? I, I'll okay. stick to your originals any day, man, any time. You know something, this is really interesting because I remember uh, talking to a friend of mine about this whole, you know, Facebook and social media star, uh, thing. When we started, we would like people actually not to, 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 to put like, but we like it to people be like ashamed or afraid or, or scared about the music. We didn't, we didn't look for people to say, oh, good. We look for people to be like, oh, my God, this is too heavy. And now no, it looks... This, and I, I think mean, it was different because with all the, the letters and the tape trading, you know, you got to you gotta know people to be on that scene. You cannot, uh, I'm going to be death metal today and, and go to, I don't know, to a website. Back then, there was no internet. There was a lot of metal shops. And some metal shops were like, like the, the point where people used to hang out and meet you know and that's how a lot of bands started and a lot of people met if not it came from school you know school buddies that that were ah oh, let's let's do something you know let's play some some music let's do some fucking extreme song some brutal noise mm -hmm. we're not thinking about money or chicks or fame or 
we're we we're hoping to one day record an album and maybe yeah. one day doing a show you know that's where like on the bucket list for us back then. Exactly. Like, Let's fucking do a show. That would be amazing, man. Nowadays, it's, yeah, yeah. everything is so disposable. And 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 I, I think that's the, the bad side of it. You know, internet, I think it's a very cool tool. Uh, but people are enslaved, uh, are enslaved by it, you know, are, are, are dominated by it. And then then you're lost. Then you're just a puppet, you know. <laughs> and, and I think the extreme matter is not about being a puppet. <laughs> I have a question for you. Thank you. All. First of all, as I said, it's an honor for me to have you here. I have many questions. And one of my questions is like, I, since Edu, you're, uh, do, you did tours in Europe and also in Brazil. Many, I never toured Brazil with a band. You know, I toured uh, as a, a drum clinician, but never uh, as a, with a band. And people say in Brazil, uh, it's very uh, difficult to organize shows during the week. Because in Europe, we play like Monday to Monday. Instead, in Brazil and South America, you have to stop. Is it true? You know, I, th I think there's there's a lot of problems and, and things that should be better in the scene, but that's up to us. So the way I see it, you know, yes, it, it is very hard, but it's a culture. So we need to start changing the people mentality and, and showing them uh, shows will start on time. So it is possible to do during the weekend instead of going to a bar having a happy hour with your buddies from work just go support the metal you like you know instead uh -huh. of uh i don't know doing something else you know so so slowly after a few years we're we're already doing shows during the week here in brazil and in the whole latin america because i was i think it's a it's a cultural thing back in the the 90s uh, shows were super late here, you know, it was starting after midnight. So, of course, it was impossible oh to do it during the week. And even in the weekends, it was hard for the bands and for the crowd because shows were too oh, late, you know, because... Yeah, so in Italy, it's in Italy the same. For sometimes it's like no I sense. Sorry. Yeah, but I, but I, I, but I have this, this... Sorry, Paul. Go ahead. No, no, that's so okay. I have I this yeah, no, I have this theory that that a, a late show, people don't go to watch the show. People go to drink, and and we're like the soundtrack <laughs> of a disco. Whatever is playing, it's playing. They don't give a shit. Early shows, people go to watch the fucking show and support the bands, and then That's they go right. out to drink and party. So so yeah. we need it. We need to change that in Brazil and in Latin America to make it possible for the touring bands to tour because to do shows only in Fridays and Saturdays and maybe Sundays, it's impossible to make a living as a musician and as a band, you know, and, and it will take yeah. you a whole fucking year to tour one country uh, yeah. only in weekends. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. But did you try, I mean, did you try to make tours Monday to Monday in Brazil or you did Oh, we, we do already. Uh, we do ah, you already do already. A couple of years, yeah, yeah. yeah. And of okay. course, a few, a few days are hard, but, but that's normal. That's in Europe as well. That's in the US as well. But I yeah. think if, if you do if you do a proper job and if the show starts early and ends early, even during the weekend, it's best for everybody. It's best for the touring bands. It's best for the crowd that can go out with your wife or your girlfriend afterwards yeah. for dinner or for, for whatever, you know. Yeah. You can still keep the metal going, support the metal, and make it possible for everybody, you know. So, so I think... Over here, it's a matter of culture, but we are changing it slowly. You know, it takes time to, to, to make people understand and see it is possible. So we've been doing already, I don't know, three, four years already. We've been doing tours in Brazil, for example, from with shows Monday to Monday. So, and even Paul can say that because he was in a in a tour recently over here. We we had shows okay. during the week, and yeah. and some shows during the week are even better than shows in the weekend. You know? yeah, we okay, had so shows and some of the shows during the week like fantastic. Yeah, yeah. There and, was like and, eighteen and, shows in twenty four days or something. Really, not too many days off. Yeah, just okay. a few so days 18, off. So eighteen eighteen shows in Brazil. Yeah. yeah. Wow, really that's like, that's cool. What I wanted to say, what I wanted to say is that um, I got interrupted, but <laughs> what I wanted to say is that we did uh, 22 shows my first time in Brazil in seven weeks. In 2010, <laughs> we could only play weekends. Oh was, wow! So that's why it took seven fucking weeks to do the shows, yeah, man. Seven weeks on the road, man. So, 
seven weeks and you were only playing Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday, you might get a Thursday, but mostly Saturday and Sunday, or Friday yeah, and Saturday. Okay, my question and is, when you are... Hours, what, you'd have four days off and you sleep on somebody's floor. A lot of times with fleas, uh, no, nothing against Brazil. Not everywhere. No, no, no. But sometimes they would give you some flea mattresses. Not on tour with Edu. <laughs> you know, I had a bus. I actually didn't get so, bitten, bitten by my bugs very much that tour. Okay, but so, in 2010, it was a living hell. We did it because... I'm a road warrior, you know. I did the tour, man. That's Whatever. True. We kept going, no, man. I know. Absolutely. I know you are a road warrior, and I totally respect you as you know it. But my question is, if you have four days off, I mean, is, is the promoter paying accommodation and food for four days? I mean, how, how? it's like no sense. It's like a lot of money spent. And yeah, you were staying, Like I said, you were staying in somebody's house, and... Uh, and you're on a shoestring budget and you were eating, you know, whenever you could, you know, a lot, a lot of times you were lucky and the people were really nice and, and the, the, the mother or uh, the housekeeper would cook for you all week. Really? They, they were nice to us. Don't, don't get me yeah. wrong. I'm just saying no, some no, of the no. accommodations were a little rough, but this is in 2010. It's a long time ago. Okay. Believe me. No, yeah. no, no, no. I mean, just to be clear. It was still a great I experience, of course. No, no, no. Just to be clear, I love Brazil. Because what's been... nice about it is you really, you really got the you know, you're yep. but still uh, as i said 20 shows right, in sorry. seven weeks it's too much so yeah just just to make it clear i'm half brazilian and i love brazil i love brazilian metal heads so there, we right. are just we are just discussing about playing only in the weekends if you are touring brazil that's the point and and having like four days off every three days it's like yeah. a I mean the way the way I see it nowadays is different, you know. Of course, you you cannot bring. Uh, uh, it depends on the production cost and everything else. You don't want to bankruptcy your promoters, and and you don't have any options in the in the future. But uh, but it is possible nowadays to do to do shows during the week. I don't think only in Brazil, but in the whole Latin America, this have changed a lot uh, in the past couple of years still to be needs to be improved but i think it's it's getting better in that sense you know I, I think it's getting better like like paul said they it took them seven weeks to do 20 shows that's a financial disaster you know? yeah, yeah i you mean can, of course you can never survive with with that you you will come you come uh you'll it, hurt the band and it hurt the finances of the band that's why it is important to play every day even though Maybe some shows would be smaller, but that's a working day. It's better than a day off. A day off, you yeah. only spend money, uh, maybe in hotel, in food, or, uh, you know, exactly. you make shit, people fight. You know, it's terrible. It's better to work, you know, mm -hmm. even if it's a slow show with not a lot of people, you're still working. <laughs> you still have a, a chance to sell your merchandise and you're doing what you love. And maybe you get yeah. a, a place to sleep and some food. So I prefer to play every fucking day instead of sitting in a hotel room and, and making a mess of myself. I do you know? too. I yeah. agree. It's, it's not about the money. <laughs> it's it's not. about It's about doing something. Yeah, it's about yeah, doing something. It's not something about the money every least... time. Of course not. I agree with you. It's about fucking... No, no, no. Yeah, so, so I think that that has changed. Uh, that oh, has... Yeah. It changed in Brazil. I mean, we've been, like I said, we've been doing Brazilian tours uh, like two months. We can do around 50 to 54 shows just in Brazil. Uh, so this changed already. This this reality of uh, shows during the the weekend only. It's it's maybe a 90s okay. thing or, or early 2000s. So you know? My fault because I thought I, I thought it was still going like that. So I no, happy no. to hear. Okay, it's good because everybody, everybody said this in Europe. Everybody, I mean, many people I met. Yeah, Brazil, it works like this. So it's good to good to know. Yeah, so, it, it's when when I was traveling with the Christian guys, that's how I realized uh, the shows were happening very early every night. You know, in the US, in Europe, and then I said, dude, why we're doing so fucking late shows over here? everybody's tired everybody's drunk the bands are tired you know nobody wants to fucking watch a show in four in the morning it's it's that's yeah. stupid man you know so, so try to make it before midnight you know and and least, after yeah. seven before midnight and that's perfect perfect timing i i think you know yeah. 
No, absolutely. Excellent. I mean, in, in Germany, they have the best timing ever. Like eight o'clock you play and at 10 o'clock you can go out, you can have a beer and the band is not exhausted. And Especially in the summer because you guys have the fucking sun up until 10 or 11 at night. So you finish the show and it's still sunny. It's very cool. Yeah, <laughs> true. Okay. So I have a, another question for, for Paul. So Paul, okay. um, this year, yeah, my, my, mm -hmm. my question is now you have the, the master, the guys are from the US. Is this a temporary thing or is like a, a, a stable thing also for the Europe? <laughs> I'm, okay, of course now, of course now the, the we have COVID. Probably, the, guys probably, the guys are probably watching right now. They're wondering that question too. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. So no, but I in mean, reality, uh, I don't know. What, I honestly don't know what the future holds. It's that, that's a hard question because right now uh, Americans aren't coming over to Europe. They're they're not being invited here because of the coronavirus is yeah. going. Yeah. Up. Look at the Brazilians, dude. I'm yeah, worried. But could you? Lee? But could you play? I mean, can you play shows now in your home in your hometown? Could you? play some because in Italy we can play some kind of shows with people you know uh, if people are seated not, not so close and, and everything so and what about they're doing shows in Czech and Slovakia the problem I have right now is that I don't have a lineup <laughs> my lineups in America the other lineups uh, finished for over a year now and that's where I'm at so we'll see what okay. the, we'll see what the future brings you know Okay, okay. And Edu, what about the shows? That... Sorry, Paul, uh, finish. No, let me finish. I just wanted to say if things don't shape up by December, well, yeah, I'm going to have to start working on some players here because there is an opportunity to play in Czech and Slovakia and also Germany. And I haven't played since March, and I'm really bored to freaking death, you know? You know. <laughs> Likewise, <laughs> man. Likewise. I can't even – yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't... You know, I don't, I'm not going to say the guys are out of the band at all. I'm not saying that. I'm just hoping that – No, no, of course. Maybe I mean, the board uh, my question. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to make a chance, but right now I don't. I don't have an answer. Sorry, I just want to make clear my question. Since I know the guys, uh, I know the guys from the band, and they are both super cool. My question was like, if you can basically, if you can play shows in, in your home, hometown, that's that was my question, and you replied to it. Uh, Edu, what about Brazil? What's going on there? Can you play shows? No, shit hit the fan here, dude. We're we're in deep shit here, man. Everything is kind of fucked, you know. Our our president is the biggest dumb fuck ever. And and everything is chaotic, man. It's uh it's chaotic. I mean, don't worry, it's chaotic everywhere, even in Italy. Yeah, but, but some places it's very... are even worse, I guess. You know, we have a bit more chaos. Not not that I don't I, know the kind I of don't... chaos I like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah, yeah. This is the bad chaos. We like it's, the good it's chaos. It's really fucked up, but no, I, I've been home uh since uh Friday the 13th of March. And uh, I'm bored as fuck. Yeah, last show we played was this, <laughs> last show. We Everybody's the December. same. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah. Everybody, I mean, since you're getting used to like to uh, travel a lot, like every month we travel, we play with the band. And I found out playing with the band was my therapy, you know, because I like, I, I, I just keeps my, my mind sane, I would say. So yeah. staying home and not play, and because this madness, act, this is the thing, this madness, Keep, keep me sane. So I'm getting crazy by living a normal life. It so is I can very imagine. hard. I, I think it's very hard for us musicians, like touring musicians, this this pandemic thing. It's very hard because you got to reinvent yourself to not go fucking crazy and, and, and lose your fucking mind, man. Uh, of course, we were working as a band, but limited. Like Paul said, our singer is from the U.S., And uh, oh. we recorded our new album, and uh, we cannot continue because we need him over here to finish the recording, and he can travel. I, we cannot travel there. He cannot travel here. We have a tour in Europe yeah. scheduled for November, two weeks. We're really hoping we can make it, but we don't know yet because Brazilians, wow. like North Americans, are not allowed to travel anywhere in the world because mm -hmm. our fucking presidents are fucking assholes, and we're fucked. We're exactly. paying... We're paying for their fucking wow. mistakes and, and their lack of uh, intelligence. But in Brazil, can you play shows or no, not? Not really. 
And I don't believe in that's life the problem. Things, and and, and the same thing, he, life thing, and the same thing you do said is it's like. Paul, please keep saying you were saying something. Paul, can you hear me? I didn't get it. Paul, shit. can you hear me? Let's see. Let's see. Paul. Frozen just, again. Just, yeah, just, just close okay. the. No, I couldn't hear you guys the, at all. Okay, close the window and no, just restart okay. it. Okay, now I do. Yeah, what now? Yeah, I okay. can hear you. So you were saying something, and what, what were you saying? And open again, yeah. Yeah, just close it and, and reopen it. So okay. uh, I, I, I always um, speak with Edu. So maybe. Edu, no shows just, in Brazil. No, no live no. shows. No, no, not at all. Nothing, Ooh. nothing happened yet. Uh, everything is closed, uh, show wise, and and it's very hard because our government has has no policy for entertainment at all. So all the crews and, and uh, technicians and uh, musicians, we're all fucked. We're the first one that got fucked and the last one that might get back sometime, you know, wow. which we don't know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's really bad over here. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I think it's a lot of due to the, to the politics we have. Of course, this strike the whole world worldwide, but some countries took it seriously and, and did some measures and, and something about it. And and ours is just a big circus, unfortunately. Oh, okay, shit. So, uh, Paul, can you hear us now? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm so, in, in, <laughs> okay, okay. I can see from from flyers that uh, in Germany and in Austria uh, you can play shows. Did you? Uh, how how are they doing it? Like social distancing and people not staying close or like limited mm -hmm. to few people? What you what do you know about it? Let's see. Uh, some of these countries, uh, yeah, I guess Germany. Maybe they're doing they're doing some social distancing. Yeah, but over here in Czech, uh, there's just maybe a limited number of people, a few hundred, it seems like, you know. But you can do shows. I mean, I haven't gone to any shows. They're, they're not around my neighborhood here, you know. But like in Prague and stuff, they're doing shows. So I saw some videos. There's people. Nobody's wearing a mask. I don't know what to say. But then, I, on, like on the news today. Uh, they're saying maybe maybe they're going to lock down the country again for so the second wave what, or something, right? What's happening here? It's really? Good, you know? They will lock down the country again? Yeah, everybody's telling is talking about even in Italy they're talking about the same thing. But if they do it again, yeah, I they're mean, talking about. Yeah, I mean, if this happens again, I don't know right? because in Italy it was very hard. They they locked down for two months. And many, like many people, uh, lost their job. It was like very bad. I know in Brazil you had a, like a different uh, measures, not as extreme as the Italian ones. But yeah, still, but that's why we're fucked, you know. Because uh, first of all, our president think this the the COVID is a joke. <laughs> so to start to start that, everything is wrong, man. You know, mm. I mean, some people use Max, some people stay home, but some people go out. It's a fucking chaos, man. <laughs> it's like, man, I, I don't worry, dude. It's like Italy. It's the same. It's sad. I, I guess it's, it's, the... it's very sad, man, because I'm, I'm doing what I think it's right, and I'm paying the fucking, uh, uh, you know, because people are not respecting the policies. Uh, I have to stay home longer and longer, you know. I, I'm hearing the the peak of the first wave will be in this month and then that next month and next month. It never wow. comes, man, that there's no peak, you know, we're still oh coming. And, uh, and and yeah. I see other countries like in Europe or some places saying about a second wave coming. And I'm thinking, fuck, we're not even over with the first wave. And you guys are talking about second wave. So the way I see the only solution is the vaccine, man. Without it, it it's going to be this mess, you know? Wow. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, I mean, not very good news coming. So, not everybody, really. Not uh, really. Edu, what's your full time job? Uh, you work with, uh, no, no, <laughs> sorry, I, sorry, I, yeah, 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 sorry. <laughs> I didn't want, I didn't want to, to sound like I'm not the thing. Uh, my question is, no, what, I, uh, I mean, I, I had a regular, like, let's say, uh, a office job for many years. 
and uh and i quit uh around six seven years ago i quit to really focus and dedicate sure, 20 percent uh hear to hear the music and to yeah. what i believe in you know because if i not if i don't believe in myself who's gonna fucking believe in, on me that's you know? so cool so, that's really so, cool yeah that, that that this is what i wanted to ask you so maybe maybe it came out uh, in the wrong way but my question was like so you're you being like with tumba with a band and with a label this is your full-time job this is, yeah man this is so cool especially in brazil you know that's fucking this shows like really dedication yeah i mean uh that's the only way to go from from what i see you know in the in any business if you don't dedicate 120 percent, you will fail so Maybe it took me a few years to to make this move, but I decided uh, to quit everything and focus wow. really on, on my dreams and on my passion and and on music. You know, being this is, a drummer this is, or yeah, this being is a great. drummer or a booking agent or or tour manager or a roadie, whatever. I want to work with music. This is my life, my dream. So I quit everything else that was not related to it, and I'm 100 focused. It's not easy, but I'm happy. Uh, and this is the main thing, you know, I don't want to be a millionaire. I just want to have a decent life and play my music and do the stuff I like, man. And, and this is really cool, you know, especially because many people uh, need to hear that. I mean, because especially in Italy and Brazil, they don't believe in their dreams enough. Sometimes they're I mean, like, hey, I mean, it's in life, the only guarantee we have, it's death. Everything else, there's no has. guarantees. So you either believe and go for it or just fucking quit and find something you believe and you will go for it man you know? I, I, do. I do you just said something so fucking cool and i will keep it because it's true the only certain thing is death so i would just do whatever makes me happy that's but that's, that's true quote. i mean some people are like oh uh, to to i don't know to quit my job i need this guarantee there's no guarantees man you know just fucking go for it man you either believe it okay at least you tried you did your best and you can move on you're, you're okay you're in peace with yourself you know and, and that's that's how i see life you know you either you're either in or out there's no shades of gray man and especially on fucking extreme metal fuck this shit you want to have a hobby great you know you can have a hobby you can play weekends but don't fucking be in the way of the touring bands of, of the hard working people because it's hard enough as it is we don't need to compete with you know uh hobby bands you we know, weekend warrior. bands because they ruin yeah, we our fucking warrior, business right? yeah. many times you know they play uh, for free yeah. they they no, want in italy in that. italy in italy there is this thing that people pays a lot of money to play shows yeah like, this, this has been a man. disaster and, and this is stupid you know this is fucking stupid of course some promoters need money and they find suckers to pay for it uh, good for them you know but yeah. but yeah. you can clearly but the quality see... yeah but the quality of the shows went like shit. now yeah, the of people... course man of course you cannot just pay and be there and expect people to fucking love you because you paid and you're there you know it's yeah, i it's mean you gotta nice. earn you gotta earn your five paul can say that you gotta earn it man you know or or leave it man Fucking leave it man you know go yeah. go do some pop music or whatever man Not yeah, you, need to... yeah. you got you okay. guys were, you guys were fading in and out completely now i can hear you uh okay what was that question about uh what do you do what what's your second job what did you say you do no 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 it, it, i don't know sorry it came out what's, wrong I mean, my question was like, what was the if I do? Well, no, it's okay, it because, because I, I don't have a second job. My no, only no, job I know, is I know, music. No. Okay, my my yeah. other job is going to the post office Monday, Wednesday, and Friday after the gym to mail out packages every week. That's my yeah. okay. That's my job. I guess. But it's still, it's still a bad thing, right? Okay, it's okay. not a bad yeah, job. Yeah. No, no, it's amazing, John. Let let me just clear these two people. Uh, since okay, I do works like. Edu does like everything from drummer, promoter, he has a label and everything is, is related to the music. This is cool. Paul, perfect. He, he, Paul is the owner of the band Master and also he owns all the records and all the merchandise. So you take care of your band, uh, I would say plus, 360 Plus there's degrees. Death Strike and Abomination and the other uh, oh, bands that play with. Oh, yeah, that's, he, the, oh, that's what I'm doing. I, that's what I do for a living. I sell Master and... Speckman merchandise, you know? 
And I, I, play, I mean, I play as often as I can and hope for more shows. It's hard times right now, y'all. I'm bored. Fuck. Yeah. I can't hey, imagine. Yeah. Are, are you picking up those shrooms, Paul? Hey, what? Are you picking up those shrooms, man? Are, is it near your house, those fucking yeah, nice actually, shrooms yeah. you're picking up? Yeah, the shrooms are about uh, maybe about five miles away. Not not far at all. But, oh, but maybe right. a 10 minutes drive, you know? It's it's not so far away. 10 minutes by car. But, uh, yeah, cool. it was actually raining today, so maybe soon, you know, I'll be there again. All right. <laughs> I try all to right, keep right, busy, right. you know that. Hey. <laughs> Paul, when master became, when music became your full-time job, is that there is a, a a particular period? Yeah, maybe. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Now. Let me think about it. Maybe, maybe twelve to thirteen years ago. It didn't happen overnight. It took a long time. You know, maybe thirteen years ago, I really just started doing this. You know. Before that, I was doing a, I was, I was, as a merchandiser on tour with York and Falco at Brookstein. I did that for many years. Uh, when I first came to Czech uh, 20 years ago, I was teaching English for a while, too, for three or four years. I didn't know really? that. That's cool. Yeah, I, you know, I have the, these classes with like 25 students, and it was interesting times. How old were they, man? How old were the students you were teaching? Is the kids or like like uh, let's, let's, let's say between like uh, 15 and 30, you know, it was different. Right. right. Different okay, so, it was maybe some, okay, that's cool. Interesting. You, can you can you imagine oh, some of cool. some of them had maybe some oh, of them yeah. knew who you are? That's cool. Open a picture, you know. That's a nice teacher, man. I, I wish I had a I mean, I was teacher a like Paul. Teacher. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember when we I were touring with, with come in there, you know? what? Go ahead. When uh, we were touring with 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 Master, um, I remember Paul is the man with he knows so many great stories. I can imagine how a great teacher he can be because he tells you so many great stories actually that are true, like about the scene. It's like completely insane and actually you wrote you wrote uh a book about your life right can you can you tell us something uh, about it's, it it's really more of a pictorial with just some stories the, the life the life story book will happen when i get a little bit older i'm, I'm not finished yet you know <laughs> okay <laughs> but it, it but it, it has to happen right oh it will it yeah to. you guys are oh, both okay, in okay. there you know that <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, oh, okay. Thank you. So uh, you, you know what's uh, what's amazing about Paul Raphael? It's uh, every time I tour with uh, with Master, uh, being a promoter or being a band, Paul is the always the first guy to come to the venue, set up the merch, sits down at the merch the whole fucking I evening. Yeah, yeah. No, leaves the merch to go on stage. After he's off stage, he sits at the merch. He watched I know. every opening band. He talked I mean, to every fan, and that's inspirational. You know, that's a true, I, I agree. true fucking metalhead, a true warrior, trooper. You absolutely. know, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I remember. Kids, I remember. Yeah, yeah, kids. Actually, think really. I remember. I was actually impressed because, as you know, sometimes you get tired by playing, and but he was like setting the merch, playing, going back to the merch. I mean, this is a full time job. Because it takes him like all the evening, and he's taking no, care and of everything. It's a lot of dedication, you know. Some musicians are tired. Of course, Paul is tired. Oh, you know, everybody no. gets tired. But some no. musicians are like backstage. You know, they don't talk to people. They don't do this. Yeah. I, I don't really think that's cool. You know, uh, I, yeah, I think what right Paul, Paul does it's fucking awesome, man. I think I every band should do it. Man. Talk about metal and see the people and hang out. Of course. Yeah, or Jack and Coke, or smoke a doobie, whatever you know, whatever you're into. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's why. Okay, the same thing. I, I, I mean, I'm not a, a, a diehard uh, public creator as as Paul, but I, I enjoy a lot talking to people at the shows, and this is something I am missing a lot because you know that we meet the craziest people on the road. We meet the craziest guys ever. So this is what I'm really missing. You know, the people yeah. who came at the show and had like a tattoo of a very, I don't know, of an unknown band from Philippines. And he says, hey, Edu, I have the demo of Nervo Chaos from 97. You know, the, I, I yeah, miss this kind crazy of crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is this is why we're doing what we do, you know, just 
just because we we get the chance to we're lucky enough to get the chance to travel get paid to do what we do and meet cool people as as you and, and worldwide you know every place you go there's a metalhead there's a diehard and 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 we bound well, because we metalhead is a metalhead anywhere in the world we kind of think the same we we like the same kind of stuff and, and this is the magic i think i really uh, like i mean i mean you know having the chance to have this uh, this live streaming makes me meet people meet like yeah meet people like you and I, when you talk like when paul talks i, I still re you make me remind why i like metal because sometimes it's easy to forget, especially these days, because you don't feel connected with the scene anymore. But then you talk with people like you, and I said, oh, there is hope. You know, still some oh, people yeah. think, yeah, this is what I'm really missing, you know. And that's why actually touring uh, with Master, I, I, I play with them like two or three shows, uh, three, two or three tours. And when you see like dedication from Paul and people like you, because you know that sometimes, I mean, when you organize a tour, the, the amount of time you spend and the money you earn is, is never, I mean, you don't do this for the money. You, this is like oh, a way I of mean, living. Show, show business is a super high risk business. You know, of course you can make money sometimes, but a lot of times you, you lose money, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, if you break even, yeah, I, I consider a success, you know? Yeah, yeah no, no, because you want to, that, that's, I mean, that's a great mentality because you say, okay, I will do the tour. And if, if it breaks even, that's great. Otherwise, yeah. I will do it anyway for the passion. I mean, I mean, that's why metal became big, thanks to people like you who were doing it for the passion. So this shows like, OK, yeah, so I, I mean, the, the way I see metal, uh, metal fans like myself are dedicated to the bands, to the artists you like, you know, different than than pop fans, for example. Pop fans will mm -hmm. jump into the new trend. It comes every summer, a new band. They forget the other one. They go for it. The metal fans are, are dedicated. I can see, you can see a grandfather, a father, and a son in a show sometimes, you know. You go to a Maiden show or Judas Priest, you can see three, four yeah. generations at the same yeah. show. And that's dedication. That comes from, from your house, you know. You don't learn on the street. That's fucking metal. Know? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So teach so, children yeah. to worship Satan. I mean, I, I do really, you should be like a teacher at the Meta University and Paul should be the owner of the university, like, <laughs> like the uh, big boss. The so, big boss. My question now, uh, what about the future? Uh, of, of course, neither of you consider retiring, right? Never. That's the thing. So my question is, okay, for a drummer like Edu, you play death metal. What do you think? I mean, did you ever consider? What what you think is gonna be the moment where you quit? If you ever thought about it, you know I it. I don't think about it. And when I see older guys shredding like Gene Hogan or or Dave Lombardo or those guys, why should I stop? I mean they're ten years older than I am. You know? <laughs> That's they good. can still do it, so I can still do it, man. You know I I think I think it's in the the soul in the heart so it's I not you. you know and, and i take care of myself getting older you start taking more care of yourself you know i, I don't drink alcohol anymore and uh, try to do some exercise just to keep your in shape you know and 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 to be able to perform you know but uh i don't see myself quitting uh before death <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's it uh, paul can you hear us have you ever considered quitting let me see if Paul can hear us. He's froze here for me. I mean, Paul is really old school, even with a computer. That's why I, I love him. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> maybe he. Okay, let's let's keep uh, talking while we see if he's going. Yeah, back no on problem, that. man. So, Edu, uh, I was suggested. Uh, Amilcar from Turtle Squad gave me your 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 name. I always like about Brazil that the scene is so uh, united. You know, I think you have one of the most united scenes in the world. Do you agree with me since you've been also to Europe? Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know how are the other scenes, so I cannot really uh, talk about the others. But uh, uh, Brazil, yes. I mean, um, let's say I see two groups, you know. I see the, the touring bands and uh, let's say the hobby bands, the weekend bands, you know. And, of course, the touring bands... Uh, I talk to, for myself. I, I always try to help my friends, man. 
if it's Torture Squad or, or Christian or the Headhunter DC or Mystifier, even Sepultura, why not? You know, I mean, we're in the same business. We're on the same page. We're all together. The scene is about all of us and, and we need to do a better scene. Uh, there's no CEO or ombudsman that you can put your complaint. Uh, we're doing the scene. So, yeah, we should stick together and help each other. It's a big metal family you know and as families there's fights there's problems yes of course that's normal you know but in general i think you know we, we're proud of the of the brazilian metal warriors so we try to help them every time and i see bands like christian trying to help other brazilian bands as well and and everybody's trying to help each other and i think that's the beauty of of metal and and it should be that way i mean it shouldn't be different you know because if it's different, it's not metal anymore for me. I really like your, your attitude, Edu. Hey, Edu, are you from Sao Paulo? Yes, I was born okay. and, uh, and raised in Sao ne Paulo. Next time I go to Sao Paulo, I'll make sure I catch you up and we have a... a please, beer. man, you're more than welcome. My, my please, pleasure. please, so, it's uh, a pleasure. Okay, a question about uh, to Paul. Paul, have you ever considered quitting? Never. <laughs> That's fucking great. So you see... Never, your, your, I'm going to do this until I can't do it anymore, of course, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's so inspiring got, to talk I to mean, you guys. I mean, I said it, you know, you got to fight till death. Of course, you know. Okay. Uh, well, uh, in Europe, I keep losing you, you guys. I got, a shitty, I got a shitty internet connection over here, yo. I don't know what the problem is. I keep losing you guys. Yeah, I, yeah. I, mean, I can hear you good. Yeah, your connection, your connection is too old school, Paul. But uh, we we could hear you for, uh, yeah, for uh, mostly of. Talking about something, I miss what you guys are saying. I'm pissed off trying to get back on you. <laughs> oh, I understand, but thanks. I mean, we could hear you very well, and you said many cool things today. So because maybe it's the connection, it's the it's the it's the first live uh, that has this problem. So I guess it's your connection. So, Paul, one question. In yeah. Europe, you were playing uh, so songs from Master from, and from Death Strikes. It was the same band doing it, uh, and the U.S. guys would do uh, so the tours with Death Strike as Death Strike? Yeah. yeah, it was just, you know, it's just Master plays Death Strike or, or Master plays Abomination, whatever, you know. It's just a chance to relive the past and play some tunes, you know, of course. The people yeah. want to see those songs and... And I enjoy playing them like I did with you, the Abomination Tour. I enjoyed that time. There weren't so many yeah, people yeah. at those shows. We had a good time. You know? No, absolutely. I mean, especially after this whole... I mean, um, this is important to say. Uh, when I toured with Paul, I learned what really being a road warrior means. He <laughs> takes care of the business. He takes care of the, you know, of every detail. He cares. I mean... And this is something I always say to, to people who want to have a band and maybe they want to stay in the backstage doing nothing for the whole day. I said, you should check Paul. He's really, you know, putting the merch and he's taking care of everything. He he, yep. see, he sees all this. He's an inspiration, man. man. Yeah, total inspiration. There's yeah. a part guys like Paul only, you know. In general, I, I don't see a lot of guys like Paul. And, I, and that's why for me, it's really inspirational. Like you said, you know, he's taking care from the beginning to the end, every single detail. And not only for Master, but the, the bands that are touring together as well, you know? No, no, no I remember. He was cool to everybody. As I said, yep. uh, me, me and uh, Paul, once I had like to fill in for Master and basically we had no rehearsal, you know? It was very difficult show back in Italy, but mm -hmm. he, he, he did everything he could to make me feel, you know, uh, confident. And it, I, 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 as I said, I have only... When people, uh, and you can ask to people, when people ask me about Paul Speckman, I say I have only good things to say about him. Because he's, he's no, 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 no. <laughs> he's one of the few people who I believe he's more European than American. You know, the way he treats people, the way, he, and, and nothing against the American, please don't get me wrong, but it's like he has this way of. of of uh, talking with people and solving yeah. problems, yeah. it's like very, really, really different. So uh, my question: is, We are getting to the, at the end of the live. I have a question yeah. about the future. 
how do you see i mean i know i do you're in brazil but if black. you have to be optimistic i mean I how can black black because, because painted my question black, man yeah. painted on how, black <laughs> how long can we last like this because that's the question i'm asking because one one more year like this i don't think it's possible for nobody i mean i mean for me i don't know about paul but for me i lo i lost one year of work already because of wow. course to to prepare for for 2020 i worked 2019 for the tours and and for nervo chaos oh. tours for tumba tours for the festival so that's lost that's a whole year fucking lost yeah. you know even some money was lost i cannot have it back because it was invested of in course. whatever already you know so uh, uh, we're on hold as Tumba until the vaccine. I can I, I cannot afford to lose yeah. one another year of work yeah, yeah, <laughs> because I don't can. know what's going to happen, you know. And for Never Chaos, we're working on the backstage. Let's say we're working on the new album. We just put an, a new EP today, some uh, some new merchandise, and uh, we're starting to rehearse again as a band. So we're doing what we can uh home but uh without a vaccine for us uh there's no future okay <laughs> it's, it's like uh any online uh what about the online sales of the record well, label? online are sales people... are, are, are doing pretty well uh, i'm very happy with it of course we cannot make a living out of it but it, it helps in this moment because it's an income uh, when we have zero income from shows or, or anything else so uh internet sales are, are doing well we're every week i'm at the fucking post office uh luckily and thankful for the support of our fans because they make this possible and uh besides that we're doing like uh some old video clips there's a series we're releasing with some uh, some old videos from our archives you know uh, and stuff like that stuff we can do with that is not touring <laughs> uh okay. so at least i mean at need... least the, at least the fans are supporting i, I mean they understand we're on the same page i mean they know uh yeah. everybody's is in the lockdown so it's not something like oh I'm, i will take a sabbatic year off or something now we're off because we have to you know and and so the fans are supporting the way they can because of course it's hard for they them are. too that everybody has to eat and to pay the bills and, and etc yeah, so it's sure. fucked up for everybody okay yeah. paul what about you are the fans supporting master do you think i mean they they understand the the situation i'm selling more merch this year than i have in many years at home oh okay so the fans so, are definitely supporting you yeah. okay that's a very good thing to which know. is at a least. great thing i think more people are home now more people are home now and they're on the computer so they're seeing more of my stuff and buying it but i'm not complaining support is a good thing <laughs> yeah so that's that's good but, but as i said for you it were like road warriors this is this has been a disaster like a year that i hope you will you want to forgot i mean i mean it's it's it, yes it is a disaster but on the other hand uh it made us think and reinvent ourselves and uh and we're even more hungry now when we come back it's gonna be fucking uh you know we lost one year uh, off the road let's say you know it's not what, lost what? because we're doing shit, but uh uh we have a hard on we're ready to fucking go on tour so what did you what did you change what did you reinvent what did you learn from from this whole thing what did you change i, I, st I started uh studying some stuff i didn't have time to so i studied uh, uh photoshop final cut those programs to edit videos and photos i oh, i'm closer to my son as well so i'm spending more time with my family which is nice as well I built up a studio for Nervo Chaos, so I'm in the putting the final touches you know, wow. for our headquarters, so we can really do everything home. Let's say you know, from rehearsal to recording to experiences, uh, you know, working on new stuff and etc. So this is the stuff I'm doing uh, during this year. You know, taking care of my plants and, uh, and my family and uh, the bandmates as we can and uh, crew as we can because it's hard for everybody so i try to support you did know. you have did you have a crew also with the nervo chaos you have like yeah we these? we have a tour manager sound guy uh, he has the studios he's called victor hey victor if you're watching us cool guy 
And uh, so I sent him a few a few things for for mixing and some studio jobs just to for him to have an income. And uh, it's, it's my way to show some support to him, you know. And uh, I'm trying to do what I can for for my people, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah. That I mean, I really like to hear you, man. I do. It's really inspiring what you what you are saying, you know. But you, I mean, the way you care about your crew and your band. Of course, it's, it's it's our family, man. I mean, without them, I'm nothing, you know. So, so I, I mean, we're a team, we're family team, and and this is uh, how it should be with uh, Tumba or Nervo Chaos. If it not, it it's it doesn't work, you know. So this is the way I I feel, not on, on about music only, but about life in general, you know. I mean, really, uh, I I was sure Amilcar suggested me that the, the right guy. But after talking to you, really, I mean, I really can't wait to be back in Brazil and 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 We're looking see you. forward for it, man. And, man, and I yeah, see we have a, a live stream with Amilcar and Max coming yeah, soon as well. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be sick, man. They're so, the, as you, they're killer drummers, man. And uh, I, I've know, been studying with them when I was a kid. I was yeah, I was a student with Amil. Yeah, I was a student of Amilcar many years ago. Oh, you know, wow. when I yeah, because it's like uh, actually uh, I learned drums in Brazil. Cool. Because back then in Italy there were nobody teaching metal oh, when really? I started. In, yeah, because uh, in in 2000 in Italy metal was considered like the music of the devil, so no oh, drummer that's was. Good, though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but it was very hard to learn to to learn from someone. I so got it. There were many like uh, uh, jazz teachers, but if you want to learn double bass, nobody was teaching you. So when yeah. I went to Brazil, since my my grandmother and my grandfather they are from Brazil. I had the chance to learn from from there. Yeah, Amilcar, Amilcar is an amazing drummer, man. Uh, what can I say? Max as well, you know. Uh, yeah, they're very, they're very they're different. Fucking but... amazing drummers, man. It's, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I remember when I first saw Max it was uh, 1992 uh, here in São Paulo, and uh, the drummer from a Brazilian band called Corsus uh, back then called. He had a studio, and he called me and said, "Dude." come over here in my studio and check out this band. So I went there and we both stay watching this band rehearsing and the band was fucking Christian. And wow. we, were both, we were both blown away. We were like, dude, what the fuck That's, is that, man? Wow. They, yeah, they it are was sick. amazing. And, and then Amilcar I met a few years later around, I don't know, around 95 or 96 uh, when Nervo Chaos started. I think it was around 96. I met Amilcar and, and Torture Squad, and of course we bonded. And watching him play is, is fucking amazing. Those guys, man, they shred on drums, dude. They're fucking amazing I will, drummers. I will check. I saw your work because as I, as I said, uh, I, I'm out of the data, man. I'm a fucking punk. I will, yeah. <laughs> I will, I'm, I'm but I do what I love. Here. That's that's amazing. As I said, I really like your attitude, and it's something really. Uh, people should should uh, learn from because everything you said shows a loyalty, you know, to everything that is metal and to to the scene. So as I said, it's really I mean to somebody like me, it's really inspiring. I'm 37, so Thank I'm you. 10 years younger than you. Uh, but you started when I was really a kid, and I remember Tumba, like you having a shop and all this stuff, really made a big impact on my uh, yeah. on my career. And and the thing I wanted to be metal because of people like you. You know, of thank like you very a, much. I I, th I think we should try to keep this kid alive inside you every fucking time, man. Don't kill the kid because this is this is what keeps me going. This is what keeps me inspired. You know, I, I'm still I'm still the same 15, 16 year old kid inside when it comes to music. You know, I'm a sucker for that, and and I think that's the beauty of it because it make it makes natural. It makes it uh, I don't know something spontaneous. You know, it's uh, it's something uh, you see and learn with with experiences. You know, going to shows and talking to bands and talking to people and reading books and reading metal magazines and and then you start saying, "Dude, yeah, this is the way to go." You know, and and you follow your heart and your passion. Don't, re Dude, don't I mean, think about it. I can much, feel man. your passion from Italy uh, through the computer. This is fucking amazing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, man. you can. I see. had a good teacher. He's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> too bad the connection of Paul isn't that good. Paul, can you hear us? Ah, uh, too bad the connection isn't working. Yeah, he's, because, he's uh, the master, man. I he's mean. the master. Yeah, as I said, I have tons of respect for him. And, and honestly, 
really every time I speak with people and they ask me about Paul, I have only good words because we've been in many difficult situations as usual, like when you are touring and there are no rehearsal. And he yeah. has been always the kind of guy who is, I mean, I really uh, think and hope he will get the recognition he deserves. Because when he, you started such early and you keep yeah. going and you treat fans like that, yeah. he deserve like to be the I, king. I totally, I totally agree with you. I think he's he's totally deserve it way more than uh, they get. You know the recognition they get. I think they deserve more. But on the other hand, sometimes uh, being a pioneer, it's hard. That's the price you pay. You know <laughs> because. Some bands maybe came later on. A lot of bands maybe came later on and, and got more recognition than he did. But he's one of the pioneers, and maybe that's the price for being a pioneer, you know. And, uh, and it is not fair, uh, but I think this is what happens sometimes, you know, because like you said, they deserve much more uh, recognition than they have uh and I don't know, but it's maybe just... it's like maybe maybe that's our maybe that's you know because we like them and maybe we think. But at, at the end, if you think they are making a living, they care about yeah. you know They're successful they sell already making a living. Yeah, out exactly. Of it. They are successful. It's... I mean, making a living out of metal, you are successful already. I think true. You know? And he, like he said, he's been doing only music for twelve or thirteen years. So there's the success, man. He, he lives of uh, extreme music. He's doing what he loves. And I and I'm total respect, man. I take my hat off and it's inspirational, you know, because this is the way to go. This is the only way. Okay. Sorry, uh, Paul just wrote me a message. Uh, okay. Because he's, he's, he, the internet connection is not working. So we just, I would just say thank you to him and I will write him later. Yeah. And, but I want to keep talking with you, Edu, since I think really, really no interesting. No problem, man. As you wish. And uh, no, no, absolutely. As I said, uh, I was sure Amilcar suggested me the right, the right guy. And I'm really, pl I mean, when I, I, I speak with people like you and I can't imagine what you've been through in order to have a label and a booking agent in Brazil in 1996 without yeah. the internet. I mean, so my, what was the first, the first tour you booked? The first, the first shows I did was not really a tour, it was three shows in Sao Paulo uh was agnostic front <laughs> so that that was the first international band i i had uh, the pleasure to work with and then uh right after the next year i did uh deeds of flash oh in, okay uh, i know that i remember the band yeah yeah it was i think it was 90 98 98 okay. i did this the flash 99 this gorge and then I started uh, around 2000 and on uh, bringing more bands. I was just starting with one a year international, but I was doing uh, domestic bands uh, in 96, you know, 97. And then around 2000, I did, I don't know, Monstrosity. And then it came uh, Cannibal Corpse, you know, Dark Funeral, Mordor, wow. Burger Off. I mean, you saw you work with band from many levels, right? Oh, many, many levels. levels. Yes, yes. Many, many levels uh, in the extreme metal level. This is what you say. do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what you do mostly. So my question, I want to ask you something. Do you think like in the last 10 years, we had less people coming to extreme metal shows? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. Not only in Brazil, but I. Uh, this is something I see everywhere with the exception of festivals. Let's put festivals out of it, but let's yeah. say club shows. Uh, I would say fifty percent. You know, fifty percent less. Yeah, like uh, I don't know the first uh, the first shows I used to produce is uh, with Tumba in the early two thousands. We used to have around a thousand people. Nowadays, if you put <laughs> I don't know five hundred, <laughs> it's very successful. Wow! Wow! So, wow, wow. so okay. yes, it it changed a lot, and I think there's a. A few reasons for that, you know. I think, uh, first of all, in our reality, Brazilian reality, uh, it's the financial side of it, you know. With having concerts more frequently, uh, people don't have enough money to attend all the concerts they want. Mm. Uh, and that, uh, some a city like Sao Paulo, a lot of people get spoiled, you know, because they, they get a lot of tours, they get a lot of shows, so they start going last to the shows because it's not... I don't know. They get spoiled, uh, and okay. and so we have the financial part with the floating of a lot of bands coming, 
and uh, so the competition is hard so i think and the internet a lot of people it, it's getting harder and harder to take people out of their houses you know people are getting i don't know lazier or or uh, or maybe i mean in europe what we in italy what we find out is like there is no younger metal heads it looks like metal is something for people that has more than 30 years in italy yeah now. but then then that's our fault as well you know because mm. we need to teach the children and welcome them to our scene and not fucking scare them and kick their ass and put them out of it and, you know because they're kids and they don't i don't know uh, it happens here in Brazil too. It used to happen a lot in the late uh, 90s, early 2000. Uh, young kids coming to a death metal show with a DSI t shirt, and the older guys will come up and say, What do you know about this band? If you don't answer right, they will kick your ass and take your shirt out. You know? <laughs> oh my so, God. Yeah. So, so you're scaring the kids. Uh, you should and be. Then- you should be welcoming them and because they're the future for our scene you know once we get old and die who's going to continue with this you know if we scare them off and they will go to other music styles you know so we should welcome i think that's our fault you know we should welcome the younger uh kids to the scene of course they don't have the obligation to know about it but we're older and we can show them and 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 you know teach them dude. And, and show them some bands and say dude check this out maybe you like it i really know? i really like your mentality i think it's yeah, but that's the way to go because if you kick their ass they're not coming no. to the shows anymore and the other guys are not that freaking to the shows and they don't buy that much merchandise anymore they don't want to go to the front and headbang anymore they want to sit at the bar and watch it's different you know so we should welcome the kids and the youngers you know that's the I way mean, I see it, at least, you I know. Mean, yeah, I mean, I do. it's so inspiring to talk with you. And I really <laughs> want to thank you for your time. And I can really think, you know, um, talking with you and Paul, um, it shows really like that this, like how was the scene? And it has some values that maybe they are getting lost. And I believe, you know, uh, people watching these days on my YouTube channel and Many people these days, I've been doing many live shows and every every one of them, I invite people who have something to say. And Ooh. I always like when things go beyond my expectations. And you did. I appreciate you- it, man. I, I had a lot of fun. Too bad Paul had a had a bad connection because it's, a, it's an awesome one. You invited me for this live stream. I was so humbled because you as a killer drummer and oh, Paul, on the other you. hand, I, I'm like, dude, you know? No, you I'm absolutely, you, you did. Here, you know? No, it's nice. Thank you. I mean, as I said, um, I always wanted to, to thank you because you don't know, but I, I bought many records from Tumba when I was a kid. I appreciate, man. I appreciate, so, uh, the way I see it, we're all together in this. this yeah, is, absolutely. This is, and you know, we're connected, man. I remember when I, I because now I'm remembering because, uh, but you were the only guy working at Tumba? Yeah. Because we met. Uh, Tumba, Tumba mainly is a, is a one-person company. Okay, uh, okay. So we met, so, I remember, because so, yeah. now, I, you know, I was like 18, so it was like 20 years ago or something. But yeah. I remember I, I went there because I was looking for demo tapes back then. I didn't want to buy, like, the famous bands. I wanted to buy... Uh, hey, wait a second. No, no, now I'm remembering. I bought an Evocado CD and you there sold you go. it. Probably, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So as I said, <laughs> everything, you know, and I remember when I, I came back to Europe with all those records, you know, and all these uh, people being so cool with me, I made some of my best friends like uh, in uh, Galleria do Rock because I was yeah, an, Italian, totally. an Italian guy asking questions about metal. They could have like stabbed me instead they became my best friend so no finish. i mean i mean uh some people especially people that are not in the metal they judge they judge the book by the cover you know so they see all those crazy i don't know hairs tattoos all the angry faces and this and that but i think i think all in all in general the metal scene is it's pretty it's pretty cool i mean it's pretty welcoming there's problems there is of course there's some issues here and there but in general i think it's a very cool place to be man no no uh, I, I guess I that a lot completely you know, agree shows, like you said you know meeting the guys meeting the people talking getting to know each other learning because i learn every fucking day you know yeah. and, and and this is the beauty of it man and and supporting the bands you like and buying their merchandise 
this is this is the metal scene for me. It's Absolutely. not only buying records and going home and headbanging, you know. It's a, it's a whole concept. It's a lifestyle. I still remember when I met also Max from Crisium and I was a kid. And he was so gentle with me. And I will always remember the way he treated me. Because I remember I was like, he, he was already kind of famous in the scene. And I met him in Milano also. And he was playing, uh, they were opening for Cannibal Corpse. So it was already yeah. something big. And he was the only guy who were really staying with the fans and talking. He was so cool. So yeah, yeah. you make me remember. So as I said, you and what you did with Tumba, you made uh, you know a lot. You did a lot for the scene. And it made me really appreciate the Brazilian scene. So thank you, thank thank you. you very much, man. I mean, I, I didn't do it alone. And uh, and like I said, the Christian guys do help me, did help me a lot and still help me a lot. We're very good friends. And 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 they're superb people. They're fucking awesome people, man. They're they're the same since I met them in '92. You know, yeah, uh, they're sure. the same fucking people. And this is like Paul. You know, there's a few people that we get the chance to meet, and I'm lucky enough to to meet those guys and even become friends. So I feel honored and and humble to you know to learn every time we're, we're around and we're together and and. And this is the way to go, man. I, I, I'm a metal fan myself, you know. So when I when I go see the bands I love and the guys have a nice attitude like Max or like Paul, you become even a harder fan. Or yeah, more I completely you agree. Know? And, yeah, and sometimes absolutely. you meet you meet some some band you like and the guys are total douchebags, total assholes. And you kind of hate it. There's some bands I cannot even listen to it anymore because of I that. Know, you know? Yeah, I know, I know. Some some bands I can't not even listen. And sometimes like, I think, ah, oh, I wish I was just a fan. I never met that guy because I, I would listen to the music and nowadays, but but I prefer to stick with real people like like us, like you, like me, like Paul, like Max. There, yeah, there's some real sure. people, and this is the inspiration for me. This is my fuel, you know. Man, I really, uh, I do. I really thank you for your thank time. You, and I, I, I want to say to who are listening, uh, I really learned a lot today from you and from Paul, like usually. And I saw you make me like uh, feel proud again of my metal roots. And I'm really honest with you. Like I fucking, after talking to you, I remember why I love those records, and I really yeah. miss it. Yeah, yeah. so. I'm going to wear my possessed t-shirt tomorrow and be like, man. Go on, man. I mean, I mean, like I said, unleash your kid, man, inside because he is a true passionate headbanger right there. This is why you started. This is why I started, you know, and, and I keep this alive because this is the, the, the only way to go because if not, you know, you're going to get old, boring, and fucking square, and that's it. <laughs> you know? Man, so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, man. I, thank so you, you are, appreciate you it. You are 47, right? You are I'm 47. I, I, I want to 48 in October. <laughs> okay, so hopefully things will be better. And as I said, I, I'm sure we will meet in person uh, someday, hopefully soon. Hopefully Once we again. can tour Europe in November and meet. If not, soon we'll see. I hope so, yeah. Soon. Are you playing any shows in Italy? Or were you going to play any shows? No, I, I'm not sure. I don't think so. We're doing a, a tour but with uh, Demonico and, and Lick and uh, and Burning Utopies, I think, from Sweden and us. And it's mainly Czech, Germany, Austria. Yeah. But uh, if I can travel, if I can travel, I'll go there because I need to you're travel. Welcome. And at, at any show, you're welcome, man. Just thank like you, Edu. Once again, right. thank Thanks you all right. for the live stream, man. Thank you. Man, for, I really respect you what you did. I really respect what you did. So uh, this stays live. I thank you for what you do for Tumba, for everything you did, because you made a kid like me back in the 20, uh, in the 2000 find like a place to stay and a way to believe in metal so thank you and you completely deserve to be here with paul today we will. thank you thank you appreciate it man thanks thanks bye. so much bye to bye everybody bye bye, -bye.